So I've been enjoying my Celestron AVX mount. She's a little flimsy, not as tough as the EQ6R Pro, but she sure can spin this Hypersar C6. Welcome back to the channel, all 375 of you great astrophotographers. I am Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel. Now we watch some of the bigger YouTubers get really awesome gear and upgrade constantly to levels that most of us will never achieve. When I wanted a second rig, I needed to look at a bargain and that's when I picked up the AVX. I recently did a review about the AVX, it's the second time I've actually owned it. I sold my first one to pay for the EQ6R that I have now. Put a link to that video right there for you. But this is the real meat and potatoes right here. This is the tuning of the mount. This is getting this guiding improved. Out of the box, I was running about a 1.6 to about 1.4 arc second on PHD2, just pretty much regular settings and everything. Then I ran across this video from a gentleman called Astro Farmer. Man, this guy's only put out like four or five videos, but this one here is a diamond. I followed a lot of his suggestions. Well, I'm gonna go over those and show you my results. My results are based off of three nights of imaging, some of them full nights, letting it just run. A little bit of time and some changes in PhD to dial things in correctly and examine the behavior of the mount. So let's go over all those settings right now so you can tune your AVX or even a lower end budget mount. I consider my EQ6R lower end and I am going to try these settings with PHD2 as well and see how they will improve my guiding even after the hypertune. So three nights, like I said, I went from that 1.6 to 1.4 range, the first couple nights using this, down to around anywhere from 1.1 to about 0.85, sometimes even better than that. Now, a couple things are into this first. Guide scope, totally changed everything around on there. Added a UV IR cut filter to that improved focusing and that has helped tremendously now when we get into phd2 here and you take a look at things we always look at the arc seconds and all that kind of stuff which is great the other thing i've been really paying attention a lot to lately is the ra oscillation sometimes when your mount starts out or you make different moves you will oscillate for a while it'll go back and forth across the zero point when you get down below a 0.5, as you can see right here, I'm around 0.27, that means that you're gonna have a pretty good and respectable guiding based on most of the pixel scale that we are all shooting at. Now, if we're shooting longer focal lengths, of course, this is gonna change things. One of the big things that Astro Farmer talks about is corralling the seeing. PHD2 was designed with like super great mounts, not the equipment that most of us use. So we're gonna have to do some different things than they would recommend. What I've been doing is trying to guide with a higher gain on my camera and around a half second to one second exposure. 90% of the people out there will tell you this is the exact wrong thing to do, do not do this. But I say that you definitely want to give it a try. I have had excellent results with it and I can't wait to try this out on my EQ6R Pro. Now, the other thing I've done is some changes in the guiding assistant, which is why you may see different aggression settings and different min moves as well. Those are based off of the different algorithms that I decided to use inside a PHD2. We'll take a look at those algorithms right now. All right, so let's do this. Global settings, everything here pretty much default, except we are gonna baby the mount a little bit and we are only going to randomly dither in RA. So you saw that that was checked there. When it comes to the actual camera, I set the gain higher in the CWO driver and I've been kind of playing around with different exposure as far as the saturation of the star to make sure that it picks a good guide star to begin with one that's not too bright and one that's not too dim. In my guiding here, you can see nothing really crazy going on with this. Assume deck orthogonal to RA is something that I haven't had to click yet. My calibrations don't look too bad. There is a ton of backlash in here, 
but it's really not been affecting my performance. Here's where things get a lot different. If you look at the algorithms, we're using predictive peck and write a session and resist switch and declination. Now I haven't really changed anything under the right ascension besides I will adjust the min move based on the exposure I'm using anywhere between usually 0.2 and 0.75 and as a custom exposure, it goes, it goes ahead and it measures the worm period for you. So you, you really don't have to do that. It's kind of an automatic thing. And in declination, you can see that I've made a few changes, but Really, I just kind of let it roll. Deck has just been running really just fine for me. As you can see here, it's very well behaved and well tamed and has been for all three nights of the imaging. You look at the image here of the monkey head that I'm shooting right now. Everything is just turning out super smooth. It looks really good. We're picking up that little blob nebula that I framed right in there with it as well, which is cool. And if you look at our guiding right now, we're at 0.85 and I usually see that this is a little bit higher inside here because for some reason, I think the scaling is off between Nina and PHD2. So here's a look at some guiding calibration and some results from the past couple evenings. I'll go ahead and pull up some of my longer runs so you can see what we're getting. As we're dialing things in here, you can see we started around a 138 making different changes and going down to the actual imaging and stuff. We have a guide run of almost two hours right here, which was down to 135, couple star loss. Again, we're still doing some changes. And then eventually we are gonna get to a point down here where things are just fantastic. We're gonna go to the next night and here we go, calibration. Everything is nearly touching the line, which is the way that you want it to go. If you have red circles outside of that line, you might have some issues. So check out this hour and 12 minute guiding session. We are down to 1.06 with a star loss as well, which is pretty great. That's what that little declination hump is there. Just love the way that that turned out. Occasionally I will make some changes to the actual exposure or the min move if I to see things are misbehaving a little bit, but that's all that I've really had to change. So we're constantly running about one to 1.1 and sometimes better. As I said, that's about a 30% improvement from where we were and when we first came out of the box. And that is more than acceptable for the scale that I'm shooting at. And I'm able to even reduce those stars even further using Star Exterminator, Starnet++, or Adam Block's star reduction techniques. Needless to say, me and this AVX have became very, very good friends over the past week. My EQ6R Pro is finally up and running and taking images more on shooting with two rigs coming up in another video. I had to go through some switching between scopes because the GT81 has a really bad issue with pinched optics. Had to take the flattener off, do all kinds of stuff for high point, and we'll be sending that off to them, I guess, to get fixed. Who knows? Because it takes them a week to respond to you. They are so busy selling things that they don't even have anymore. I don't really understand how that works, but whatever. So try these settings out on your AVX or your mount. Let me know how they go. I, if you have any more suggestions for me, let me know. I would like to get these numbers even better. Of course, I do have PEC enabled on the hand controller in CPWI, so that's always a good thing as well. Run the guiding assistant, see what it says to do, try it out, then try this method. I bet you will do better. So we will talk to you guys next time. Peace.